What I'd like to discuss right now is the cervical spine and the pathologies associated with some type of numbing or tingling down the arm. You're going to have many clients that would come in and say, I have pain down the arm or some numbing or tingling. The first thing you want to ask them is where in the hand or arm they feel it. If they feel it more in their thumb area, in the thumb area, that would constitute more of a radial nerve. If they were to feel it more in the palm or the center here of their hand, that would be more median nerve. And if someone comes to you and says, boy, I'm getting some you know, numbing or feeling in here, I lost sensation in my pinky, that would be more ulnar nerve. What I want to discuss now is where these compression or irritation sites may be. First could be the cervical spine, where the scalenes are, and here's the brachial plexus nerves exiting. Another irritation or compression site could be underneath or inferior to the clavicle or deep to the clavicle, along with pectoralis minor, okay, thoracic outlet type symptoms. Another area of highly uh, normal pathology for numbing down the arm would be on the anterior arm for biceps and pronator teres. Okay? That'd be more median nerve. And the radial nerve, as it comes around here through tricep or under deep two tricep, through the supinator. So the radial nerve passes through supinator and we have some tingling or numbing in there. So again, here would be more radial nerve. Here would be more median nerve and here would be more ulnar nerve. Now what if they say the whole hand has, God, I can't, I can't shake it out, I've lost feeling, you know, they can't squeeze and stuff. Well, we may want to check more up in the cervical mm -hmm. spine. But before we do any of that, there is one specific test to be sure that they can get any tests. Is there's an artery here, as you can see, that goes up the posterior the cervical spine. We want to test to see if that artery has any issues at all. If they have any numbing or any dizziness or any type of, you know, strange feeling, nausea associated with this test, you would send them off to either the hospital or a doctor, or I would cease all treatments at that point. So what we're going to do for this test is we're going to take the head, we're going to rotate it, and have them just come back. If they start after 30, 40 seconds, a minute, to get some numbing or dizzy, how do you feel? Okay? Yeah. All right, we'll just simulate that, so she's fine. And now the other way. And again, we're testing this artery to see if there's any type of pathology or neurology or something going on here. And if they're clear to go, then we can move forward. Okay? So to review, there's compression sites or irritation sites in the cervical spine, clavicle, peg minor. There's some coming down into the anterior of the arm, okay, with biceps, which I find most often biceps and pronator terrors for the median nerve. A lot of times carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms, people say I have carpal tunnel symptoms, but I come in through the bicep and the um, pronator terrors, and that alleviates the issue through here. And also the radial nerve here, okay, thumb, forefinger, and ulnar nerve in here. So let's do some orthopedic and special tests to determine where some of these cutoff points or choke off points or even irritation points may be. The first one we're going to do is called the compression test. I'm going to take the person and I'm going to gently compress. As they came in, they said, oh, I have some numbing and tingling, something coming down. Well, this may make it worse or it may exasperate or, or have some more symptoms. So what we're doing is we're kind of compressing here gently, not hard. Person says, no, I don't feel it so much. Okay, no problem. What we're gonna do after that is we're going to rotate the head and tilt a little bit. So in the processes of us rotating and tilting, we're really compressing these nerves. So we're gonna rotate and tilt and now compress gently if they have that Ooh, here, that's, that's a, you know, the sensation of that tingling. Oh, God, gotcha, gotcha. got you. Then we know that it could be somewhere in here, more likelihood. That's a positive test. So those are more compression tests than you could do on both sides. So I'll do it again. Just a straight compression. Nah, I don't feel it so much, or maybe I do feel it coming down the arm. They don't. They do. We're going to rotate and come down this way. And then we're going to try that again, gently. So we're gonna change the angle of the cervical spine to get different angles, okay? Thank you. And then we wanna do another test called a distraction test. If someone does have the persistent 
neuralgia or tingling or numbing down the arm, I can't shake it out, can't stop it. What's gonna happen is we wanna do a thing called the uh, decompress. We wanna lift up gently. If this alleviates some of the symptoms, that's also a positive test, because they if they have symptoms of a nerve type of impingement or nerve compression or irritation here, and they're presenting uh, tingling, numbing, and this decompression or upward alleviates it, then we're making space for the nerves, and that's also a positive test for that. We want to do another one called the ADSEN test. What we're doing with the ADSEN test is we are checking out the anterior scalene, middle scalene, in association with the brachial plexus nerves as they exit the spine, okay, so the lateral spine. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the arm, we're going to find the pulse in the wrist, Find it, boom, boom, coming. Okay. We're going to pull the arm back. Feel strong pulse. Upon rotation of the head to the same side, if that pulse is diminished in any way, shape, or form, you feel it less here, then what the situation is, is that maybe the scalenes are cutting it off, the nerves. Okay, so the Addison test again, we're going to come in here, find the pulse, we're going to bring this arm back, keep the pulse with the head straight then the client will rotate. If the pulse diminishes at that point, then it could be some pathology in the scalene area, which is this region right here. So when the person rotates the head, it kind of cuts it off a little bit. So to review, you will get some type of compression or irritation sites in the cervical spine. You will get some compression sites clavicle, as well as pec minor, bicep pronator teres region, tricep coming around supinator, and of course the carpal tunnel itself, but we will do that later. There's a couple more movement tests because our job is you know, to evaluate movement as well as structure. So we're gonna test her range of motion of her cervical spine to see where some other muscles or other structures could be affected. The first one's gonna have her just flex her neck. As you can see, she cannot touch here. So you should be able to have your chin basically touch, so you have to touch. So your chin could, should basically touch. So that's associated with some type of pathology in the cervical spine. Then we're gonna have the person rotate, and we're gonna come down. And again, it's a little stiff, more pathology regarding that. And then we're gonna try the other side, please. And they do their full range. If they cannot touch, then it's a pathology associated. Next, we're gonna have them rotate to the full range. Pretty good for her. What if someone can only go here? Then we know that there's some type of calcium or something going on in the cervical spine, but we're going to discuss that in the future. And then rotate the other way. Then we're going to do right ear, right shoulder. See the range of motion in here. And if the muscles re release, and the opposite side. And you don't assist them. You let them go as far as they can go. Obviously, if there's some pain, we know that there's more um, associated I guess pathologies or musculoskeletal things. So let's try this again. We're going to come down. She's going to go in here. You see that there is some space. You really should be able to take it further. Then we're going to be coming to this side and down. And you can see that there's space. And then we're going to go to the left side and down as far as they can without inducing pain or having them in pain. Then we're going to have them rotate right the whole way. Right, and you see that she tilts her head back. So I'm assuming something suboccipital, she's tilting instead of just coming straight, rotating. Making people move on their own without any instruction gives us a nice clue as to what their pathologies or what's tight or what's weak or what's strong or what's not working properly or what is working. So she can rotate again. Now that I gave her the clue, she's not arching her neck backwards. So let's try the left, right side again. Oh, but she still comes this way. So that tells us something's pulling in here. And I'm gonna rotate the other way. Okay? Next up is right ear, right shoulder. See how their head tilts. If it turns, it tilts, rotates this way. Let's see if they have straight tilting, lateral bending, and this side. We're also going to be doing some extension. Let's see where they extend. If they extend just from the, say, C1, and occiput, where the suboccipitals are, are they extending there? Or are they extending their neck as well? 
So observation is a big key in terms of seeing what we can work with the client in terms of movements.